Hello, everybody. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. If you wonder why we're all laughing, this is like take 20 because I keep screwing up. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm Daniel, and over there we have John. How you doing, John? Hey, all right. Um, before I get into this game, I want I wanted to talk. I guess we're gonna keep it in in, in one piece here. Um, I kind of wanted to do two shows on this, but I I think I'm gonna do one. And and the reason I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of hyphen the two. And for the beginning of the show, I really wanted to talk about this, and that's COVID in the NHL because right now it is a big problem. Not only the NHL, but the NFL and the NBA, as it looks like uh, at the current right. moment, it really does look like the NBA is having the same issue. Um, that there's a lot of COVID inside of that, but yet a lot of us don't even know one person with COVID. Right. Like, you know, it, it just seems strange. It, it, it's almost like, how are you, you know, you have all these protocols in place. How is this happening kind of thing? Right. And from what I've heard, most of them are vaccinated. Yes. Uh, I use the word immune boosted because I, 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 I don't want to get into that, but I use mm. that. immune boosted because if it was a vaccination, they wouldn't have got it in the first place. But that's my opinion by looking at the definition. You know, I don't use the word vaccination because that would make you immune to something. A flu shot isn't called a flu sh vaccination. You can still. That's that. true. You know, when they give you a smallpox vac vaccination, it's to get rid of smallpox. And it will literally eradicate smallpox. This is not what this does. This right. builds up your immune system to fight it. So really, it's just an immune booster. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in, a, in a sense, like, I mean, at what point do we, do you pause the league? Do you put yourself in a position of, you know, I mean, you're really looking at at, at an odd situation because, you know, you you have the two weeks in the schedule available, kind of. Uh, you know, you have two weeks in the schedule available, kind of. If you tell the players, hey, we'll pause the league so that you guys could all fight COVID and, and get your teams back to full strength, or we could keep playing and we're going to have these problems, but you guys could go to the Olympics. Right. I mean, in, in a, and in what sense do the players also start thinking of their families? Right. You know, because they still got to, you know, after games, when they go home, like if they have a home, if they're going home and they have a home game, you have that, you know, you go home to your family. Some of them have kids, newborn babies, young kids. You know, and I'm not just talking the Preds. I'm talking over all the whole league. Right. You know, um, you know this, is a, this is a concern because, like, today's Preds and Avalanche game, this game should have never – the puck shouldn't have been dropped. Right, it shouldn't have. The puck should not have been dropped, but it happened. I, I, I'm just saying – I'm not saying that the outcome was horrible because both teams played a good game. It was still a physical, hard-fought game. <laughs> Right. At what point are you, you know, now you've risked all these other players because COVID takes a few days to incubate. What if, you know, you're now in this situation where without pausing the league, you're not going to, you're not going to win. You know, you right. keep pulling in new guys till you're blue in the face, but eventually you're going to run out of talent or you're going to be having ECHL players playing in the NHL. Right. You know, um, I mean, it's just, a, and, and, and the Preds are, every team is allowed 50 players. So to be signed to contracts. So if you have 20 guys on, on restriction, you're going to have to start pulling guys out of juniors and pulling guys, you know, it, it, it just seems like a mess. Right. And, and it, it's something that I don't, think that they planned for i don't think they planned for this to happen right and, 
really can't plan for this, but it's just a necessity that of something we should like at least contemplate the thought that right. the go on pause. And and um, uh, just to speak out, um, I I kind of agree with with Cousins, um, National Predators forward Cousins. Nick Cousins said that he uh, he says that the league should just postpone till after Christmas or the holidays. Right. Um, he used the word Christmas. I say holidays because that way <laughs> we, we we don't know. But you know what do what do we know? We're just a podcast. We're just saying what what our thoughts are. Right. Um, you guys as fans, um, you know, we all come to see hockey, and at the end of the day, that's what we do today. Uh, we came to watch hockey, and the game happened. Um, uh, Darcy Kemper and uh, Kale McCarr um, both had. Uh, positive COVID tests um, moments before the game. They even were on the ice for warm up. So, I mean, you know, that's not good. If Makar or, or, or Kemper had any communication, not only with their team at that time, but then you're also looking at, okay, they're on the ice. What communication do they have with the other team? Right. During warm-ups, you could be sitting there at center ice talking with each other. You know, and, and it, it, it's just, I, I mean, we used to do it. When we, what I used to do when I played, I, I'd get over there and I'd, you know, stretch or whatever by the, oppo the uh, opponent goalie and we'd talk. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, what point it is, do you draw a line that you say lower circle, lower part of that circle? You can't go center ice anymore. You know, for warm ups, you, you got to be below the circle by the blue line. You know, below the center ice circle, going around the logo by the blue line. You know, what, what point do you do that? You know, I, I, I guess that's just my opinion. I mean, it seems complicated and something that would be very difficult to like control. But that's where I'm at with that. I, I, I don't know. John, you have any points on this one? <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't get to that. But if it needs to be enforced, um, I guess I'm for it. But... I mean, I, I also think that to our point that we've said on our show in previous past, um, if by this point, and, and, and this is kind of a joke I crack, okay? So it's not, I, I'm not, so please don't take me serious when I say this. This isn't, isn't something that's a proven fact or anything. But at this rate, the NHL is going to have herd immunity coming into, up into the Olympics. I mean, I mean, there's really nothing to say there. And then to say that, that you know, certain players are saying, well, hey, what's the COVID protocol for, for the Olympics? What's China's protocol for COVID? What what are all these? Because there's so many questions, not enough answers right now. And and I, I ask the same question because I'm worried about our players, and our players are worried about their families and their teams and all of this. I, I guess that's right. something that we we have to ask. Um, I do credit uh, today the uh, Preds and Avalanche for toughing it out, uh, no matter the circumstance, putting a team on the ice putting a competitive game together, a very physically competitive game. Um, let's get into that now so that I don't go rambling on about COVID for an hour. <laughs> mm. um, Nashville outshot them 35-26. They were pretty dominant on the shots. All of their shots were either A, solid ones, or they were trying to get rebounds. I saw that the Avalanche pretty much after the second period kind of got winded. And, and that does come from when you have a shortened bench. Your forwards right. are used to 30 seconds, a minute on the ice. And you got, you know, you're short. You had 12 forwards. You're short almost a line. Right. You know, and, and well, Myers played as a seventh D-man Yossi was playing wing at one point. Right. You know, at what point do you kind of sit back and look at it and go, uh-oh. You know? Yeah. Uh, 
you know, that's that's one of them games. Uh, Avalanche beat them in the faceoffs. They're uh, 53 to 47%. Um, Penalty minutes were 10 to 8. Uh, hits were 22 13. Nashville blocks were 13 11. Uh, Colorado giveaways were 6 to 2. Nashville um, still in that gap. I would have loved to see it around 5 to 4 in the giveaway department. Right. But uh, Colorado is a very good team and a very stingy one on defense. They like to be aggressive on the puck. And, uh, you know, with Nashville having a shortened roster. And with some inexperience at the level, they kind of took a little bit of an advantage on that. Um, and, and I don't really blame them on that, that you that's your job. You're supposed to do that. Right. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Carl Taylor's outfit looking like Don Cherry over there. <laughs> he legit was wearing like a Don Cherry style suit. Like with yeah. the checkered board, and yeah, he he was over there looking like Don Cherry on an NHL bench. I don't know if that was intentional, but uh, yeah, he he was over there looking like Don Cherry. So, um, you know, it was it, like I said, I, I I give kudos to both teams. Um, yeah. scoring in the first off a very good shot was Phil Forsberg with assist from Carrier, his eighth, and Sisson's his seventh. That's Forsberg's 12th goal of the season. Yeah. Um, then scoring in the second period on the power play from a beautiful pass from Colton Sissons was Tanner Janot. Um, Forsberg, Janot, and Sissons were working their butt off. Um, I also wanted to say this. Um, in the first period, I want to give big, big, big stick taps if I could. I'd go grab a hockey stick, but to yak off Trennan. Yeah, right. was everywhere causing havoc. Yep. He was he was making it very difficult <laughs> on the Colorado defense then. Um drew two penalties right away. Um, you know, and 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 that's that's kind of the situation they that you're that that Colorado was in. Um, you know, and and leading into the Tanner Geno goal again is they were getting to them by using their physicality, skill, and speed all in one. And that's something um, I think this Preds team uh, uh, really prides themselves on is next man up mentality. Um, right. You really have to have that in these COVID times. You know, um, ne next man up, I mean, I mean, literally you're talking four or five, Let's see, one, two, three, four, four players. So four guys on the next man up mentality. Right. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, you're putting in the extra work. I like it. Um, I'm seeing some positives here. Um, you know, um, also on the uh, Geno goal, uh, Forsberg got an assist. Uh, then scoring on the power play was Miko Rantanen. Was an assist from uh, Nemzum Kadri is 27th and uh, McKinnon is 21st, uh, Rantanen's 14th. Um, I did want to talk about the call on that one. That was, uh, <laughs> I believe that would be interference on Alexander Carrier for that goal. Yep. Um, McKinnon kind of drew that one, but kind of initiated it too i could have seen that going the other way right you know cross checking to the back and then you know i mean i don't blame carrier for retaliating yeah but at the same time when you retaliate nine out of ten you're going so keep your head together and if he cross checks you you go down right if he cross checks you in the back you go down that way you get the call you know, start if players are going to play you like that, then you you start doing those little things. But I do like <laughs> the fact that he stood up for himself. Um, you don't see that much. You didn't see that much here in Milwaukee from Carrier. Right. And like, um, also scoring in the second was Phil Forsberg, his 13th of the season. He is the fastest predator to 13 goals in 20 games. 
Um, so he's on clip to break uh, Arvidsson's goals in the season record. Right. Uh, Duchesne is as well. So um, the scoring in the third was Valerian Nechuskin. Uh, his 10th of the season was assist from Ratton in his 16th and Gerard his 13th. Uh, on Forsberg's goal, Gerard should get an assist on that one because had Gerard played that differently, that wouldn't have went in. Right. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Forsberg has, has terrorized Gerard since him going to Colorado. Um, yeah. Forsberg, while Gerard's been on the ice, has caused, has done three highlight goals and including getting this deflection goal that he got in this game as well. So um, there's that as well. Uh, Yossi scores also in the third. Uh, with his 10th of the season with an assist from Colton Sissons, his ninth, and Tanner Janot, his ninth. Yossi has moved into sixth place all time, tying Victor Arvidsson um, in all time goals. That is really good for a defenseman. Yeah. Um, and the EN goes to uh, Matthias Ekholm with an assist from Carrier, his ninth, Ekholm's first goal of the season. <laughs> One thing, I do not know what that puck hit, but whatever it was, thank you. <laughs> huh. Because that was one of them games where it's just like, oh, how bad is it? You know? Right. How bad is this going to be? You know, because you start to worry about it, you know? Um, in that for Colorado, because Kemper was out with COVID, uh, was uh, Pavel Francon's, uh, Francon's uh, draft pick of the Colorado Avalanche. Been in the system quite a while as well. I believe he is their backup at this current moment. Uh, stopping 30 of 34 with a .882 save percentage, but he did a lot better than what, what I would have expected given the circumstances. Um, the circumstances being that Nashville peppered him all game. They were in his face all game. Um, they did not give Colorado an inch of ice. Right. And that's something you want to see when stuff like this happens. Yeah. In that for the Preds is Juice uh, Saros really kept him in it in the final minutes of this game. Within the last three, he was making some really good saves, stopping 24-26. With a 0.923 save percentage, Preds win their sixth in a row. Head coach Carl Taylor, at the uh, for the day at least, or for the current moment at least, um, the head coach for the Nashville Predators is Carl Taylor. Um, head coach for uh, Colorado is Jared Bednar. Um, uh, scratches for Colorado, Devin Taves, Kel McCarr, Jacob McDonald, Darcy Kemper, JD Com JT Comper, and Andre Barkovsky, all of those are in COVID protocol. Yeah. Um, scratches for Nashville are Ben Harper, Cole Sherwood, and Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne's nursing a day-to-day -day injury. Um, he did skate today, but there's a chance he could play tomorrow, which would give us a chance to figure out a situation there. Um, the right. National Predators now look forward to sh the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, in that sense, also tomorrow, the Admirals uh, unfortunately look forward to the Chicago Wolves. Um, the Chicago Wolves are on a tear right now. Right. Um, and with that, I just wanted to give a little update with all the call-ups of what the Preds and Admirals have worked out for themselves. Um, the Admirals have called up uh, Zach Solo. Um, I'm trying to remember. Robert Carpenter and signed... Oh, uh, McLaughlin and Tommy Apap. Apap. It's A P A P. Yeah. Um, he has no career AHL experience. Um, he's a six-two center. 
Uh, so with that, we're kind of in a situation here of what's going to happen. Um, who our coaching staff will be, we do not know. Um, what the team will look like, we do not know. I mean, right. I mean, we're literally sitting in a – we're playing it by ear. Just keep – pay attention to our Facebook and, and Twitter. Really. That is all we can say. Pay attention to our Facebook and Twitter because – right. After today, I've been very active on Twitter today, and I, I'm telling you, um, you know, just pay attention to those uh, from Milwaukee to Nashville on Twitter, from Milwaukee to Nashville co-host on Twitter as well, as well as from Milwaukee to Nashville on Facebook and Instagram. Pay attention to those places because that is where you will get all your news from us, um, or pay attention to the teams if they get them out before we do. Um, we, we always try to be right there with them. Right. Um, but that's not always the case given sometimes we may be, uh, taking a pregame nap. We may be eating. We may be spending time with our families. We don't know, but we get to it as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching yet again. Hats off to Carl Taylor and Scott Ford and Scott Nickel for their first coaching win. Uh, yeah. This team has definitely worked their butt off to get ready today. Um, the Admirals are practicing tomorrow morning <laughs> early, so we will see how all of this pays off. We will see how all of it goes. We know that these teams can be good. We know what what we, the Admirals fans know what we sent you guys. We know what we sent you, and I saw one heck of a game from Cole Smith. Right. No, he, I, I don't see that from him here. Do that here. <laughs> Please. Now, uh, Grimaldi wasn't really noticeable, though. Now, and, and, and that's kind of a shame. Right. Um, but uh, also kudos to Forsberg for mentioning Milwaukee in the postgame presser. <laughs> Thank you, Forzy. That's that's an amazing thing because Forsberg only played 20 games here and then went to Nashville and never came back. Right. But for him to, to even think of us, is it, it just means so much to us here. It just lets us know that we leave an impression and a memory on these players. And that's to us is so special because we're normally their first stop on their right. career. And, and that is such a special moment because for us we like to make sure that we're remembered because we it's just who we are <laughs> yeah. we like to win we <laughs> like to have fun our chant sections a blast to some people they find us annoying old and outdated um the annoying people know who they are the old and outdated sir knows who he is <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking shots on the podcast, but this guy has really been kind of a thorn in our side this year. Um, so uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at From Milwaukee to Nashville and From Milwaukee to Nashville co-host. All of our graphics are uh, up to, uploaded on From Milwaukee to Nashville co-host. So if you're looking for wallpaper, screen save, uh, screen savers for your computer, anything like that, uh, wallpapers for your computer, uh, check out our From Milwaukee to Nashville co-host page where John and his lovely wife do all the graphics. Yeah. Well, thank you to all of the, you two as well for this. I know that this this podcast can be grueling, especially on bad days, but we uh, we put our head, hold our head up and uh, look at it as a shining moment sometimes. Yeah. Other times it can make it worse. <laughs> It all depends on how the product on the ice is, but you know, we always try to find the shining light in something and the shining light is, and this is the Preds of one six in the row moving into third place in the league, in the league. Right. We are in third place in the league. I wouldn't have said that at the beginning of the season. Right. There's no way I would have said, that. is it third in the league or third in the conference? I saw that that somebody had posted that we moved up in the uh, rankings. 
So I'm going to do a quick little double check here. Minnesota lost in OT, but they're first in our division. So uh, we are tied for second with, and I can't believe this, but St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have won six in a row. Uh, the uh, we are eight and two in our last ten games. We've been playing some really good hockey. Uh, yeah, we have on, on Chicago. They always got flower back there. They've got some good hockey players. Do not sleep on Colorado. They have some good hockey players. Winnipeg and Dallas have some good hockey players. This is a very tough division to win. Right. Um, kudos to Minnesota. Kudos to Nashville. Nashville's bumped their plus minus differential in the last month from negative three to plus nine. Yeah. Um, you know, a uh, six game win streak is 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 insane because if you look at the flip side of it, Arizona's on a six game downslide. You know, right. and, and there's nobody outside of Vancouver who's now won five straight. Um, uh, also, uh, Pittsburgh's won five straight, but nobody's won six straight yet. Um, Buffalo's won two in a row. They're starting to trend upwards a little bit, too. It's just, you know, you got to be patient with your build and be patient with your with your system. Uh, the current playoff situation, it, 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 it's, it's weird because looking at it, I know the playoffs seem so far away, but your wild cards are Colorado and Edmonton, and nobody would have thought that coming into the season. Right. You know, uh, Calgary, Anaheim, and Vegas tearing it up like they are. Uh, Minnesota, Nashville, and St. Louis tearing it up like they are. Now, I could see St. Louis and Colorado flop switching. I could see Nashville and Colorado switching. I, I, I could see Edmonton going up into where Vegas is. It, it's just a matter of of what happens um you know arizona's pretty much out of it right five wins you're at 28 games i mean you could still get in it but you're practically out of contention you know and and then the same thing for montreal so um you know if montreal could get healthy yeah there's a chance to turn it around i mean you still got over half a season left to play but you know all these games you know uh in the league currently Nashville is ninth, you know, and being ninth in the league at this point in the season, it's somewhere where I wouldn't have thought we'd be. It's nice to be there. Right. I'm glad we're here. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what happens in the future for us. Um, you know, our future is bright, obviously, with we're showing that tonight. You know, I, I think that that's important, but uh, I'm going to let you guys go because me and John have to have a meeting now to figure out tomorrow's plans. So uh, barring every situation. So folks, we're going to um, let you guys go. We have to have that meeting because we got to prepare for tomorrow. So see y'all. Peace.